Walter slash Gunther, for many reasons, is arguably one of the greatest professional wrestlers walking Earth today. Be it for his gripping in-ring style that convinces you he's actually trying to cave in someone's chest, as well as his underrated performances on the microphone. It's hard to be anything other than a fan of Gunther. He can win with just about any move that he does because, frankly put, he just does them all so well. And because of this, I personally think that he has some of the best matches on WWE TV every single time he graces the canvas. So today, I want to delve into his history, as in his entire history, because frankly, I didn't know a lot about him before his time in NXT UK. And I'd imagine that most fans haven't either. That said, I'd appreciate a ton if you give the video a like, and also let me know what your favorite Walter slash Gunther match is in the comments down below. All that said, let's get to talking about... Walter Hahn was born the 20th of August 1987 in Vienna, Austria. And yes, for those wondering, his real name is Walter, which is the same name he chooses to compete under. Walter got his start in wrestling in 2005 by cutting his teeth on the Austrian independent circuit. Unfortunately, I have been able to find any information about where he trained and who trained him particularly. If you know, be sure to leave a comment down below. That said, he wouldn't remain on the Austrian indies for very long, as after moving to Germany at the age of 20, Walter made his Westside Extreme Wrestling debut on the 4th of May 2007. He was featured in a match that involved Atsushi Aoki, Adam Polak, and Tenkawa. The four were featured on the pre-show for the 16 karat gold tournament. Additionally, around this time, he would try his luck in Japan's pro wrestling scene, specifically at Pro Wrestling Zero, where he would also be trained by Tatsuhiko Taikawa, as well as Tomohiro Ishii. However, for quite a while after this, he would focus primarily on training and developing his now iconic, hard-hitting ring style. So, a few years later, as he went on greasing his wheels in 2010, he defeated Zack Sabre Jr. to win the WXW Unified World Wrestling Championship. He lost the title just months later to Daisuke Sekimoto, but won it back later that year on May 2nd during a Big Japan Pro Wrestling card in Tokyo, Japan. He would then hold the title for over a year with his reign ending at 383 days where he dropped the championship to El Generico on May 19th, 2012. I wonder what happened to that Generico guy. Gunther would go and fight for the WXW title for a third time on July 17th, 2014, where he would defeat Tommy End, aka Aleister Black, aka Malachi Black, at Fans Appreciation Night. He would hold it for several months before losing it to Karsten Beck on the 17th of January, 2015. Later that same year, he partnered with Zack Sabre Jr. to win the vacant WXW World Tag Team Championship in the finals of the 2015 World Tag Team Tournament. The pair dropped the titles at the WXW 15th Anniversary Show on the 12th of December 2015. They would lose the titles to Walter's former tag team partner Robert Dreisker and Ilya Dragunov. Additionally, around these years, Walter would start a faction known simply by the name Ring Camp, where he and his now stablemate Timothy Thatcher defeated Massive Product to win the WXW World Tag Team Championship on October 8th, 2017. Just like his other tag team title reigns, Walter would only hold on to the championships for a couple of months. As on March 11th, Walter and Thatcher lost the WXW tag titles to Demac and John Klinger. On top of his time spent as an incredible in-ring talent for WXW, Walter spent a great deal of time serving as the head trainer at the WXW Wrestling Academy until early 2020. Additionally, in his time with WXW, he did wrestle for a number of other promotions. One such being Progress, which he debuted in on the 24th of May 2015, initially debuting under the ring name Big Daddy Walter at the 2015 Super Strong Style 16 tournament at the Electric Ballroom in London. He would lose to Rampage Brown in the first round of said tournament. However, the two met again later in 2015 at Chapter 23, What a Time to Be Alive, and a match notable for the ring breaking after Brown was whipped into a corner. Walter would also enter that aforementioned Super Strong 16 tournament again in 2016, where he would reach the quarterfinals before being eliminated by Chris Hero. At Progress's Chapter 47 event, Ring Camp's Walter, Alex Dieter Jr., and Timothy Thatcher challenged New Catch Republic. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean British Strong Style, aka Pete Dunne, Trent Seven, and Tyler Bate for all of their championships, in a match that Ring Camp lost. Sending his sights back on singles gold, Walter would go on to defeat Matt Riddle to win the Progress Atlas Championship at Chapter 51 at the O2 Academy in Birmingham. He would drop the title back to Riddle a little over a month later on a Progress card in New York City, but managed to recapture the title at Chapter 55, Chase the Sun, at Alexandra Palace in a three-way match against Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher. Despite working super hard to win that championship, at Chapter 68, Walter vacated the Atlas title in order to chase after the Progress World title, 
held by Travis Banks at the time. And at Chapter 74, he successfully won the title from Banks. During 2019's edition of Super Strong Style 16, Walter defeated Trent Seven in a title versus title unification match, winning Seven's Progress Atlas Championship. However, at Chapter 95 still chasing, Walter lost the Progress Unified World Championship when Eddie Dennis successfully cashed in his title opportunity on him. Think of it like Money in the Bank, basically. Additionally, in those years, Walter debuted for Evolve at their Evolve 90 show on the 11th of August 2017 in Yapa, Maryland, where he defended his then Progress Atlas Championship against Fred Yehi. Walter then unsuccessfully challenged for the WWN Championship the next night at Evolve 91 in New York City in a fatal four-way match that involved Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, and Tracy Williams. He again challenged for the WWN Championship on December 9th, where he was defeated by Keith Lee. Another promotion Walter made his rounds in was Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, or PWG, where he debuted by entering the 2017 Battle of Los Angeles Tournament, a tournament in which he was eliminated by eventual finalist Keith Lee in the opening round. He was then beaten just a few weeks later by Ricochet at All-Star Weekend 13 Night 1. However, the very next day after that, he got his first PWG victory by defeating Zack Sabre Jr. in a match that was awarded a 5-star rating by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. This match genuinely bangs, and it was the first of Walter's matches I ever saw back in 2017. Do go out of your way to watch it after this video. In January 2018, Walter unsuccessfully challenged for the PWG World Tag Team Championships with his ring camp partner, Timothy Thatcher, losing to the defending champions, the chosen bros of Jeff Cobb and Matt Riddle. However, he would capture gold in PWG, as on the 21st of April 2018, Walter defeated champion Keith Lee and Jonah Rock, in a three-way match to win the PWG World Championship. From there, he took on pretty much all comers during his roughly six-month reign before losing the title to Jeff Cobb on the 19th of October, 2018. And for the last promotion we're going to be talking about for Walter's time on the indies, we're going to take a moment and talk about Defiant Wrestling. As it was announced online that Walter was going to be debuting in Defiant Pro Wrestling, and for his debut match, he was set to be added to the Defiant Internet Championship match, of David Starr against Travis Banks at Lights Out. However, Banks did not compete in that match due to a foot injury. Instead, Walter would instead defeat Starr to become the number one contender for Banks' title. For the match against Banks, it ended in a draw at Defiance No Regrets show. Walter would get another opportunity at the title though, as on June 2nd, Walter defeated both Banks and Zack Sabre Jr. to win the Defiant Internet Championship. He'd once again hold on to the title for a few months, but on December 30th, 2018, Walter lost the title to Martin Kirby. And while that championship may have come and gone in just a few months, his next reign is something truly legendary. On January 12th, 2019, at NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, Walter made his WWE debut for the NXT UK brand by confronting WWE United Kingdom champion Pete Dunne after Dunne's successful title defense. The following week on episode of NXT UK, Walter confronted Dunn and Joe Coffey, making his intentions clear for Dunn's championship. The following week on the January 30th, 2019 episode of NXT UK, Walter made his WWE in-ring debut against Jack Stars, whom he promptly beat in just four minutes. Then at NXT TakeOver New York, Walter defeated Dunn to win the WWE United Kingdom Championship, ending Dunn's then record-setting reign at 685 days. On the May 22nd episode of NXT UK, Walter retained the United Kingdom Championship against Dunn in a rematch, after interference by the European Union's Fabian Archer and Marcel Barthel, aka Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. This would establish Walter as a heel and reunite Ringkampf under the new name, Imperium. Ever a fighting champion, on the June 26th episode of NXT UK, Walter retained his title against Travis Banks. And just a week later, Imperium interfered in Mustache Mountain's title match against the Grizzled Young Veterans, incidentally allowing the Grizzled Young Veterans to retain their titles. After that match, they targeted and kayfabe injured Tyler Bate. This was done to soften Bate up for his title match against Walter at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff, where the Ring General retained his title against Tyler Bate. Then, in the build-up to the NXT and NXT UK co-branded event, Worlds Collide, Imperium began feuding with the Undisputed Era, aka Adam Cole, Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish, and Kyle O'Reilly. This feud really fired up during the closing moments of NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2, 
when the group attacked Imperium following Walter's successful title defense against Joe Coffey. The match of Imperium vs Undisputed Era at Worlds Collide was genuinely a ton of fun if you haven't seen it yourself. There were a lot of great moments really showcasing the best of what NXT used to offer in the black and gold era, and the match ended with Walter picking up Bobby Fish for a powerbomb and getting the 1-2-3. For several months here, the world was going through the worldwide COVID pandemic, which basically halted NXT UK from making any episodes, thus having Walter defend the title even less often than how often Roman Reigns is defending his title now. After coming back on the air during the 29th of October episode of NXT UK, Walter retained the championship in a match against Ilya Dragunov in a highly acclaimed match. I would genuinely say this is one of the matches you should go out of your way to watch. Several months later, on February 19th, 2021, Walter became the longest reigning NXT United Kingdom champion, breaking Pete Dunne's record of 685 days. This milestone was massive, and ultimately would cement Walter as the longest reigning champion in the history of that championship. Shortly after breaking that record, he would show up on NXT television seemingly targeting Tommaso Ciampa, completely beating down the Blackheart and setting up a match for NXT Stand and Deliver. Then, on April 7th at Stand and Deliver, Walter retained his title against Ciampa in what was yet another banger of a match. Following him beating Ciampa the very next day on NXT UK Prelude, Walter successfully defended his title against Rampage Brown. He would then hold on to the title for several more months before at NXT TakeOver 36, Walter dropped the title to longtime rival Ilya Dragunov in a rematch, ending his historic reign at 870 days. After losing his title to Dragunov, at the New Year's Evil special episode of NA, Walter teamed up with Imperium stablemates Fabian Eichner and Marcel Barthel to face Riddle and MSK in a six-man tag match, which Imperium lost. His final match on NXT UK would take place on the 13th of January, where he defeated Nathan Frazier and then was transferred to the NXT brand full-time. Less than a week later, on the January 18th episode of NXT, Walter defeated Roderick Strong in the main event, after which he announced his new ring name as Gunther, which I don't know about you, but I always thought that happened on the main roster, but apparently I just missed it. Later that year, in mid-March, Gunther started a brief feud with LA Knight, when he took offense at Knight getting an opportunity at the NXT Championship by calling out Dolph Ziggler. The week after this, Gunther defeated Duke Hudson, and Knight came out to challenge him to a match at NXT Stand and Deliver, which Gunther won, seemingly setting himself up for a shot at the NXT title. And on the April 5th episode of NXT, he faced then NXT champion Braun Breaker in a losing effort, which ended up being his final appearance for NXT for the time being. On the 8th of April episode of SmackDown, Gunther and Marcel Barthel, who would soon be known as Ludwig Kaiser, made their main roster debut where Gunther defeated Enhancement Talent in a squash match. He would put on convincing victories like this until the May 27th episode of SmackDown, where Gunther and Kaiser made their debut as a tag team, defeating Drew Gulak and Eric Nile champion Ricochet. Then, just two weeks later on SmackDown, Gunther defeated Ricochet to win the Intercontinental Championship, making him the first Austrian to win the title, and thus starting his legendary reign. He would successfully defend the title against Ricochet in a rematch, as well as Shinsuke Nakamura weeks later. In the weeks leading up to Gunther's title defense at Clash at the Castle on September 3rd, Ludwig Kaiser announced the reformation of Imperium by reintroducing Fabian Eichner, now known as Giovanni Vinci. Gunther at Clash at the Castle subsequently defeated Sheamus to retain the title in a critically acclaimed match, with many deeming it as the best match of the event, myself included, as well as Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter rated the match 5 stars, making this his first main roster match to receive this rating. He would also beat the Celtic Warrior Sheamus in a rematch on the 7th of October episode of SmackDown. From here, Gunther would spend the remainder of 2022 and the early months of 2023 retaining the Intercontinental Championship against Rey Mysterio, Ricochet, Braun Strowman, and Madcap Moss in respective singles matches on various episodes of SmackDown. There isn't a ton to talk about, generally speaking, about any of these specific matches in my opinion, but they are all really fun to watch and absolute highlights of each episode, as well as it gave Gunther several credible and quality wins over the rest of the roster. Moving on to 2023, at the Royal Rumble, Gunther put in a downright legendary performance before he was eliminated by the match's winner, Cody Rhodes. Rhodes, who entered at number 30, and Gunther, who entered at number 1 in the match, had a banger mini-match at the end of the Rumble that felt very reminiscent of Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker from years ago. Additionally, his 71 minute and 25 second performance was the longest in the history of the annually held version of the event. However, he did fall short of Daniel Bryan's record with the Greatest Royal Rumble, where the American Dragon lasted an hour, 16 minutes, and 5 seconds. I'm curious, which of these do you count as the true Royal Rumble record? Anywho, on night 2 of WrestleMania 39, Gunther retained the Intercontinental title against Sheamus and Drew McIntyre in yet another critically acclaimed match. 
which was yet again arguably the best match on the whole card. Then, just a few weeks after the show of shows, he successfully retained the Intercontinental Championship against Xavier Woods on the 21st of April edition of SmackDown. This would be the final defense of the title that he would make on SmackDown, as the 2023 WWE Draft dictated that Gunther, along with his Imperium stablemates Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci, would be drafted to the Raw brand in the coming months. And after being drafted, Gunther successfully defended the Intercontinental Championship against Mustafa Ali at Night of Champions on May 27th, Matt Riddle at Money in the Bank on July 1st, and Drew McIntyre at SummerSlam. These were all incredibly great matches, but we're coming into one of my favorites. Gunther defended the title against Chad Gable, but lost the match by countout, ending his undefeated single streak on the main roster. However, as championships do not change hands by countout or disqualification, unless otherwise stipulated, Gunther remained champion. This was a lovely little story, and generally speaking, really helped put over the talent of Gable, and made people want to see him potentially be the guy to beat Gunther for the title, myself included. However, Gunther would in fact beat Gable in a rematch on the 4th of September episode of Raw, and in doing so, Gunther guaranteed that he would become the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion later that week. Which, of course, he did, beating the Honky Tonk Man's record of 454 days. And following him breaking the record, Gunther went on to retain his title against Tommaso Ciampa on the October 2nd episode of Raw, and Bronson Reed on the 16th of October episode of Raw. Another really stellar program of his Intercontinental title reign came when The Miz walked into the picture. The pair had some great interactions on the microphone before the event, but on the 25th of November at Survivor Series War Games, Gunther successfully defended the Intercontinental Championship against The Miz. Then the next night on Raw, after earning the respective Gunther, The Miz asked for a rematch for the title, which Gunther accepted under the stipulation that when he beats The Miz that he can never challenge for the Intercontinental title again, so long as Gunther was champion. Weeks later, he went on to defeat The Miz in their rematch on the December 18th episode of Raw, which might have been The Miz's best match ever as the pair had some great in-ring chemistry here. Following that, he would also dispatch the New Day's Kofi Kingston in a match for the title, as well as most recently, he would overcome and defeat Jey Uso after interference from Jimmy Uso, who provided a distraction which cost his brother the Intercontinental Championship. And that's about where we're up to right now. The Ring General is going to go down as one of the very best wrestlers to ever do it. That much I am certain of as his style, attitude, and presentation is something extremely special, and watching him at work is something that could captivate most, if not any audience. That said, I hope this video managed to captivate some of you as well, as if it did, I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a like, and to start a conversation in the comments, I'm really curious what your favorite Gunther slash Walter match is. For me personally, I really loved his stuff with Gable so much, and would love to see the pair run it back someday. Speaking of, I'm gonna go back and give their second match a peep. As always, I hope you stay safe and be bold, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye